Dreamtime also dream time, dream time is a term devised by early anthropologists to refer to a religio-cultural worldview attributed to Australian Aboriginal beliefs. It was originally used by Francis Gillan, quickly adopted by his colleague Baldwin Spencer and thereafter popularised by A. P. L. Kin, who, however, later revised his views. The dreaming is used to represent Aboriginal concepts of time out of time or everywhere during which the land was inhabited by ancestral figures, often of heroic proportions or with supernatural abilities. These figures were often distinct from gods, as they did not control the material world and were not worshipped, but only revered. The concept of the dreamtime has subsequently become widely adopted beyond its original Australian context and is now part of global popular culture. The term is based on a rendition of the indigenous Arandic word Alcharinga, used by the Aranda Arunta, Ararente people of Central Australia, although it has been argued that it is based on a misunderstanding or mistranslation. William Stanner remarked, Why the blackfellow thinks of dreaming as the nearest equivalent in English as a puzzle. Some scholars suggest that the word's meaning is closer to eternal, uncreated, by the 1990s, dream time, and the dreaming had acquired their own currency in popular culture, based on idealised or fictionalised conceptions of Australian mythology. Since the 1970s, dreaming and dream time have also returned from academic usage via popular culture and tourism and are now ubiquitous in the English vocabulary of Indigenous Australians in a kind of self-fulfilling academic prophecy. Origin of the term The station master, magistrate and amateur ethnographer Francis Gillan first used the terms in an ethnographical report in 1896. With Baldwin Spencer Gillan, he published in 1899 a major work, Native Tribes of Central Australia. In that work, they spoke of the Alcharinga as the name applied to the far distant past with which the earliest traditions of the tribe deal. Five years later, in their northern tribes of Central Australia, they gloss the far distant age as the dream times, link it to the word alkiri meaning dream, and affirm that the term is current also among the Kadish and Unmachira. Early doubts about the precision of this English gloss were expressed by the German Lutheran pastor and missionary Karl Strello, who noted that his native informants explained Altira, whose etymology was unknown, as an eternal being who had no beginning. In the Arerente tongue, the proper verb for to dream, was alt jorarama, i.e., to see God. The noun is the somewhat rare word alt jorinja, of which Spencer and Gillen gave a corrupted transcription and a false etymology. The native, they concluded, knows nothing of dream time as a designation of a certain period of their history. <laughs> <laughs> Aboriginal beliefs and culture Related entities are known as Mura Mura by the Dieri and as Jukarpa in Pitjantjatjara. Dreaming is now also used as a term for a system of totemic symbols, so that an indigenous Australian may own a specific dreaming, such as kangaroo dreaming, or shark dreaming, or honey ant dreaming, or badger dreaming or any combination of dreamings pertinent to their country. This is because in dream time, an individual's entire ancestry exists as one, culminating in the idea that all worldly knowledge is accumulated through one's ancestors. Many indigenous Australians also refer to the creation time as the dreaming. The dream time laid down the patterns of life for the Aboriginal people. Creation is believed to be the work of culture heroes who travelled across a formless land, creating sacred sites and significant places of interest in their travels. In this way, songlines or Yiri in the Warlpiri language were established, some of which could travel right across Australia, through as many as six to ten different language groupings. The dreaming and travelling trails of the spirit beings are the songlines. The signs of the spirit beings may be of spiritual essence, physical remains such as petrosomatoglyphs of body impressions or footprints, among natural and elemental simulacra. Dreaming existed before the life of the individual begins, and continues to exist when the life of the individual ends. Both before and after life, it is believed that this spirit child exists in the dreaming and is only initiated into life by being born through a mother. 
The spirit of the child is culturally understood to enter the developing fetus during the fifth month of pregnancy. When the mother felt the child move in the womb for the first time, it was thought that this was the work of the spirit of the land in which the mother then stood. Upon birth, the child is considered to be a special custodian of that part of their country and is taught the stories and songlines of that place. As Wolf 1994, p. 14, states, A black fella may regard his totem or the place from which his spirit came as his dreaming. He may also regard tribal law as his dreaming. In the Wanga genre, the songs and dances express themes related to death and regeneration. They are performed publicly with the singer composing from their daily lives or while dreaming of a NYUIDJ dead spirit. Dreaming stories vary throughout Australia, with variations on the same theme. The meaning and significance of particular places and creatures is wedded to their origin in the dreaming, and certain places have a particular potency or dreaming. For example, the story of how the sun was made is different in New South Wales and in Western Australia. Stories cover many themes and topics, as there are stories about creation of sacred places, land, people, animals and plants, law and custom. In Perth, the Nongar believe that the Darling Scarp is the body of the Waggle, a serpent being that meandered over the land creating rivers, waterways and lakes and who created the Swan River. In another example, the Gaguju people of Arnhemland, for which Kakadu National Park is named, believe that the sandstone escarpment that dominates the park's landscape was created in the dreamtime when Ginga the crocodile man, was badly burned during a ceremony and jumped into the water to save himself. In popular culture An early reference is found as Richard McKenna's 1960s speculative fiction novella, Fiddler's Green, which mentions Alcharinga, the Bingi spirit land, i.e. the Aranda concept translated as dream time. Early 1970s references to the concept include Ursula K. Le Guin's novella The Word for World is Forest 1972 and Peter Weir's films The Last Wave 1977 and Picnic at Hanging Rock 1975. Dreamtime became a widely cited concept in popular culture in the 1980s, and by the late 1980s was adopted as a cliché in New Age and feminist spirituality alongside related appeals to other Russoan natural people such as the Native Americans idealized in 1960s hippie counterculture. Topic 1980s Philip K. Dick uses Dreamtime, among a plethora of other concepts, to describe his breakdown in his novel Vallis, 1981. A 1982 album by Kate Bush is entitled The Dreaming, the title track of which deals with the upheaval and displacement of the Aboriginal people. A scene in the 1983 movie The Right Stuff shows Australian Aborigines dreaming just outside the Muchia tracking station while astronaut Gordon Cooper maintained radio communication with astronaut John Glenn, who was experiencing a potentially catastrophic equipment malfunction during the Mercury Atlas 6 spaceflight. During the 1980s, the UK band The Stranglers recorded an album called Dreamtime, with a title track inspired by the Aboriginal concept. The Cult's 1984 album is entitled Dreamtime. The album deals with Aboriginal themes, owing to singer Ian Astbury's interest in the book Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. Werner Herzog's Where the Green Ants Dream 1984 posited an aboriginal protest against uranium mining based on the taboo against disturbing the dream of green ants and thus causing the destruction of the world. Frog Dreaming 1986 renamed the quest when released in the USA included certain aspects of aboriginal dreaming. Daryl Hall solo single, Dream Time, 1986. Bruce Chatwin wrote the blended fiction, nonfiction novel, The Songlines, 1987, in exploration of some important Aboriginal concepts. The Star Trek novel Strangers from the Sky, 1987, by Margaret Wander Bonanno has Captain Kirk using Dreamtime to investigate an altered reality. Steve Roach's 1988 album is entitled Dreamtime Return. The album deals with the concept of the Dreamtime. The Marvel Comics character Gateway, an Aboriginal. Mutant 
that lives in the outback and first appeared in a 1988 Uncanny X-Men comic, accesses Dreamland through his mutant powers, giving him precognition and the ability to teleport others from place to place. Topic: 1990s. Neil Gaiman's graphic novel The Sandman, 1989, March 1996, is partially set in the dreaming referred to in early volumes as dream time and also reference fiddler's green dream time village an intentional community in wisconsin founded in 1990 dedicated to various permaculture hypermedia and sustainability projects british folk metal band skyclad have a polemical song on their debut album the wayward sons of mother earth 1991 called trance dance a dream time walkabout whose narrator is an aborigine. Spider Robinson's trilogy Stardance touches upon this in the second volume 1991. In The Max, the outback represents a primeval landscape of a fictional Australia where the characters travel from the real world. The outback takes heavy inspiration from Australian aboriginal dreamtime. Chapter 7 of Don Rose's 12-part comic book series The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck is titled Dreamtime Duck of the Never Never 1993. Set in 1896, the chapter shows a young Scrooge McDuck encountering an aboriginal wiseman on a pilgrimage. Grant Morrison's character King Mob in his comic The Invisibles 1994-2000 visits Uluru and speaks telepathically with an aboriginal elder. He remarks that this is possible because he is a scorpion dreaming. Tad Williams' four-volume science fiction epic Utherland 1996 touches upon dreamtime and other aboriginal myths. In the dreamtime a song written by Ralph McTell, was used in Billy Connolly's World Tour of Australia 1996. Terry Pratchett's novel The Last Continent 1998 uses several Dreamtime concepts. Topic. 2000s In Big Finish Productions' Doctor Who audio drama, Dreamtime 2005, the seventh Doctor and his companions deal with Aborigine mysticism in Uluru. The Italian painter Giuliano Gelli painted a series of canvases informally known as Aborigine, inspired by a trip to Australia and a reading of Bruce Chatwin's novel The Songlines. Alexis Wright's novel Carpentaria 2006 alludes to dreaming narrative from the Gulf of Carpentaria through her stories of contemporary Aboriginal characters, a form of Australian magical realism. Sandra MacDonald's novels, The Outback Stars, The Stars Down Under and The Stars Blue Yonder 2007-2009, use Aboriginal myth extensively. The film Australia 2008 includes aspects of Aboriginal dreaming songlines. The Finnish band Korpa Klani recorded a track called Unaeka Dreamtime on the album Karkello in 2009. Tuomas Holopainen's 2014 album music inspired by the life and times of Scrooge includes a track entitled Dreamtime, which directly references the Scrooge McDuck comic Dreamtime Duck of the Never Never, and includes a didgeridoo in its instrumentation. Sam Keat's comic Max relies heavily on the psychology and concept of Dreamtime. Jeff Smith says that aspects of his cartoon, fantasy epic Bone were inspired by Dreamtime, among other things. Queenie Chan's manga The Dreaming 2005 takes place in Australia and deals with students from a boarding school who mysteriously go missing. Aboriginal legends feature in the series. Betty Clawman from DC Comics' New Guardians was an Aboriginal girl chosen to be part of the next stage in men's evolution, i.e. the New Guardians. Dreamtime figured in the story. In issues hash 89-90 of DC Comics Hellblazer, John Constantine ventures into the Dreamtime. Wildstorm's planetary issue number 15 briefly deals with the Dreamtime. In the graphic novel Why, The Last Man, the protagonist's love interest, Beth, spends time in Australia. Events in the Dreamtime are presented as a possible reason for the worldwide plague that killed almost all male mammals. Project Alcara from the computer game Dreamfall, the longest journey draws heavily from the concept of Dreamtime, as well as from other Aboriginal mythologies. In the episode, Walkabout, 
Of the animated series Gargoyles, an Aborigine mentor to Dingo teaches him of the Dreamtime. In the same episode, Goliath and Dingo enter the Dreamtime in order to communicate with an AI nanotech entity called the Matrix. In Thai the Tasmanian Tiger, the Dreaming, Dreamtime is an alternate universe inhabited by mystical beings known as the Bunyip. The title character's family is sealed within the Dreaming by Boss Cass before the events of the first game, and in Thai the Tasmanian Tiger 3, Night of the Quinkin, Dreamtime becomes a war zone between the Bunyip and the Quinkin. In the third Sly Cooper game Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves, Murray is a student of Dreamtime, and his master joins the gang as well. In the animated series Exosquad, two of the main characters talk to an aboriginal aide who explains the nature of the Dreamtime and the cave art are shown depicting their current events. The Australian fantasy superhero television series Cleverman draws its premise and many concepts from various dreaming stories, including those of the Harryman, a monster known as the Nemorador, and the Cleverman himself. The dreaming is referenced explicitly several times. See also Dreaming Australian Aboriginal art Aboriginal mythology Minka bird Rainbow serpent Jillbrook Bruce Chatwin Charles P. Moonford Ainsley Roberts Ted Strello Indigenous All-Stars, a rugby league team also known as Indigenous Dreamtime Topic Notes Topic Citations Topic Sources Topic External Links Australian Aborigine Dream Beliefs Northern Territory Official Tourism Site Aboriginal Tourism The Dreamtime